Thank you now to a scientific breakthrough that could be a game changer for the world when it comes to clean energy for the first time ever. Scientists have produced a nuclear fusion reaction resulting in a so-called net energy gain. Simply put, they reproduce the power of the sun in a laboratory. And the big discovery was made right here in the Bay Area at the Lawrence Livermore Lab. So what does this accomplishment do? Two things. First, it strengthens our national security because it opens a new realm for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deter deterrent in an age where we do not have nuclear testing. Ignition allows us to replicate for the first time certain conditions that are found only in the stars and the sun. And the second thing it does, of course, is that this milestone moves us one significant step closer to the possibility of zero carbon abundant fusion energy powering our society. So what exactly is fusion energy and how was it achieved? Science editor Brian Hackney explains. First, this is fusion in action. Okay, weird. Next, here's fission used in all existing nuclear power plants. And fission is the splitting of uranium and plutonium. Think of Alka-Seltzer. Fizz is fission breaking apart and expanding. Unfortunately, it breaks apart into toxic nuclear waste, which we still don't quite know what to do with. Now, today's announcement, fusion, the opposite of fission, forcing something together instead of breaking it apart forcing together the fuel, hydrogen isotopes, something we have been doing forever. Actually, the sun has. A fusion reaction at the core of the sun fuses hydrogen atoms into helium, and the sun has been a pretty reliable power source for four billion years. So why not put the sun in a little bottle on Earth? We've been trying. Not easy. The hard part, getting temperatures of about 150 million degrees without melting everything in the fusion labs and slamming hydrogen isotopes into each other with unimaginable violence. And the fuel for fusion is not plutonium, it's not uranium, it's right there. Seawater, it's loaded with hydrogen. You can get as much energy out of a single glass of seawater as you can out of a barrel of oil. Isn't that easy? Not really. We actually need isotopes of hydrogen. One isotope is deuterium, easy, abundant. The other is tritium, not easy. There's only about 44 pounds of tritium on Earth. So again, not easy. But remember, in a fusion reactor, fuel supply is not radioactive, there's no greenhouse emissions, there's no toxic nuclear waste, there's no meltdown risk. So why haven't we done this before? We have. Fusion reactions have been achieved a number of times, but they have always needed much more energy to smash the atoms together than they have produced in output power. Bad, bad. The holy grail has always been to produce more energy than you use in creating the energy. And now that we seem to have achieved that, the goal is to keep a fusion reaction going in a sustainable and controllable way for a long period of time. After all, if the sun can do it, why can't we? I'm science editor Brian Hackney, KPIX 5 News. As significant as this discovery is, the director of the Lawrence Livermore Lab says we are still a few decades away from its commercial use.